I uh, am a philosopher, and I hope to be forgiven for that, uh, ultimately. Um, I'm a recovering academic philosopher. I spent about five or six years teaching philosophy at the University of Sydney and the University of New South Wales. Um, and while I found that really fascinating uh, and rewarding, because I love teaching, um, I found the whole academic nature of philosophy in the university to be quite constrictive and, um, and, and, and stifling. Um, and what I want to talk to you tonight, what I want to talk to you about tonight, uh, is really represents my own personal attempt to, uh, to, to uh, rediscover what uh, made me feel passionate about philosophy uh, when I first started doing it myself. Um, I believe that philosophy is ultimately a, um, a, a human state of mind and um, a, a, a very common disposition. Uh, we can all be philosophers and indeed we, we, we are all philosophers in, in the course of uh, our, our lives uh, which are filled with thought and feeling and passion. All these things are uh, um, philosophical attributes. Uh, my basic idea that I want to share with you tonight is that the philosophical disposition, the philosophical state of mind, uh, is an expression of care for life, care for existence. Um, so, um, I... <laughs> yeah, well, you know, everyone has an opinion and <laughs> should be shared. I also want to say that I, I, I would like to keep my uh, part of the talk uh, fairly brief um, so that we can uh, just open the floor up to questions and hopefully develop a, a, a conversation about the, the, the topics that I'm, I'm discussing. Um, so, without further ado, um, philosophy as care. Uh, I'd like to start with a fable, actually. Sorry, I can't hear the word. Care. Care. Care, yeah. I'd like to start with a fable, uh, which is a, a fable uh, written by a fellow called um, Hyginus, uh, who was writing uh, in Rome uh, around the time of the birth of Christ. Um, and it's a fable about care, uh, except a hygienist takes, uh, treats care as a person. And the fable goes something like this. Uh, one day, Care was walking by a river, uh, and she saw some clay. She reached down and picked up the clay and played around with it and fashioned a small figure out of it. Um, she thought the figure was pretty good, uh, and so she called on Jupiter, who is the king of the gods, uh, to come down from his Mount Olympus and to fill it with spirit. Now, Jupiter came down and he invested this figure with spirit and brought it to life. Um, and at this moment, Earth uh, saw what had happened and kind of sprang up and said, well, hold on, you've just, you've created something out of my clay, you know, I have some claim to this, this figure. Um, and they got into a bit of an argument over who should take ownership of this new form of life that had been created. And they called on Saturn, who was another, another of the gods, uh, um, a bit of a judge and an arbiter of debates. Um, and they said, okay, Saturn, you know, uh, who, who gets to own this particular figure? And Saturn said, well, look, okay, uh, Jupiter has given spirit to this figure. So let's say that when this figure dies, uh, Jupiter will get to repossess that spirit. The spirit will go to Jupiter. Um, the, the figure is made out of earth. And so when it dies, the physical part of that creature will go back to the earth as well. But because care has actually made this creature, um, let's say that care will own and possess this creature for as long as it lives. It will be invested uh, with, with care. And they said, well, that sounds fair. What should we call this thing? And Saturn said, well, OK, uh, it's been made out of hummus or earth. So let's call it homo or man, uh, well, a human being. So this was the story of, 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 of how the human being was created within the, 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 the mythological narrative of, um, of, of ancient Roman times. And what I think is really quite special about this story is that it places the uh, experience of care and the human power of care, it makes it central to our nature. 
Um, you know, we live in a time uh, that's uh, in which um, our, our understanding of uh, our humanity is shaped by this uh, 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 ongoing debate between science and, and religion. And, and religion wants to claim uh, authority over the, 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 the spiritual nature of the human being, and science claims authority over the, the physical nature of the human being. Um, sometimes I think that in the middle of this, this, this debate, we tend to forget that, that part of what makes human beings so special is that they have this incredible capacity to, uh, to identify value in the world, to, to, to look out into the world and say, this has importance and I care about it. Uh, this has value, I care about that too. Um, we are creatures that have this capacity to create value. And, and the very fact that we bring value to the world in this way is, is, is attested by the fact that our, 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 our a sense of the value of things grows and decreases, waxes and wanes, depending on how we're feeling. You know, you, you know how it is, you, you might wake up in the morning and you're feeling a bit blue uh, and nothing seems to have any value, nothing seems to have any importance. But then on another day, you've, you know, you've, you've had a few triumphs and all of a sudden those things in the world that really seem important just come into relief for you. And you're reminded about what it is in life that you find so valuable and passionate. I think that what we're experiencing in these moments when value and importance comes into relief with us, we're experiencing our own power to, to care about life. And, and, and our, this ability to care is, is very, very important. We, uh, without it, we're, well, we're sociopaths, <laughs> as, essentially. We need, we need care uh, and the power to invest things with value and care for them as valuable things in order to be good human beings. So where does philosophy fit in here? Um, well, my feeling is that the, the, the desire to understand, the desire to, uh, to appreciate and fathom the, the deeper truths of the world are part of our own care for life itself. That sounds like a strange thing to say. So let me try and uh, flesh it out with a, a, a bit of a story. I, I have a friend um, uh, who's recently become uh, quite passionate about philosophy. Um, she's a 33-year-old single mom. Her name is Zanzi. Um, uh, uh, and um, her daughter, Amiri, um, has recently started doing, uh, taking part in that rather controversial ethics program in schools. So Zanzi elected that uh, Amiri would not um, um, take religious instruction. She would instead uh, uh, take part in the ethics classes. And so Zanzi, she didn't know anything about philosophy and she sat in on these classes and found herself to be quite intrigued by the questions that were being asked. Um, questions such as, uh, is it always wrong to tell a lie? Well, we tend to think, yes, it's always wrong to tell a lie, but what if we're telling a lie to protect the life of uh, someone who's being hunted down by um, uh, some uh, you know, Nazi soldiers or something like that. Maybe it's not wrong to lie to those soldiers to protect that person's life. Um, another question that comes up is, um, uh, if everyone has a different opinion, uh, uh, does that mean that there is no truth? Only a series of you know, relative points of view. Um, that's, one that, that's a question that really made Zanzi puzzle. Um, and so she started thinking more about these kinds of questions and realized that um, these kinds of simple philosophical questions were just the beginning of a longer process of inquiry that ultimately became very personal. Um, uh, and for Zanzi, these questions led her towards thinking things like, well, what does it mean to live a happy life? What does it mean to live a good life? Uh, what is the meaning of life? What is the point? of it all. I mean, these are core philosophical questions. Um, and Zanzi was really, really impressed by this whole experience of thinking about, <laughs> thinking about life in this very deep, profound and personal philosophical way. Um, she knew that I'd 
written a couple of philosophical books. So she came to me uh, in search of answers. You know, she asked herself lots of questions. So she said, Tim, I've been thinking about you know, the nature of existence, the meaning of life, uh, the, the meaning of happiness and goodness. You know, what's the answer? You know? Give me the good oil. What do the philosophers say? Um, and I said, well, you know, various philosophers of various positions, and they argue for various positions, but no one's really settled upon answers to really any philosophical questions at all. It's just not how philosophy works. And, and Zanzi said, well, that's a bit strange. You're telling me that people have been sitting around puzzling over these questions for thousands of years and no one's reached any answers yet? Um, I said, well, no. And she said, well, why? What, why do they do it? And I said, well, that's a really good philosophical question, Zanzi. Stay, stay with that question because, I mean, that, that's where the magic is. Um, and I, I really believe that. I, I, I think that people tend to assume that where there is a question, there ought to be an answer. Um, but I think that if you've got a real philosophical question, a question like what is the meaning of life or what is the nature of goodness, um, then it's, it's vital to try and keep the question open um, so that people can think about it from this direction, <coughs> think about it from that direction, share their points of view, explore different, different potential answers, and just think and experience the process of reflection that is part and parcel of philosophy itself. Um, so this led me to, to, to decide that ultimately philosophy is, it's not the pursuit of answers to deep questions. Philosophy is the pursuit of a certain experience. Uh, the experience of being a living thing in the middle of a, a mysterious universe and opening one's mind to that universe and all its, its mystery and all its complexity and just appreciating that through, through the process of asking questions and reflecting on questions. Ultimately, what we're doing in this process is, is caring for our existence, caring for the fact of being alive. I always said that was the answer. That is the answer. <laughs> Look, I... I think, I think that f the best philosophy is based in a, 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 a passionate desire to, to experience the value uh, of life, uh, experience life in all its richness, all its complexity. Uh, and to do that, we need to, uh, we need to care uh, for the life that, that we're living. Um, the world that we live in sometimes makes it very difficult to do that. Um, we live in a world that ap applies incredible pressures, places in incredible pressures upon us. Our lives are, uh, uh, tend to be fast paced, hectic, complex, filled with stresses and uh, really? pressures. <laughs> you know all about this, John. Um, and as a consequence, we, we tend to become very caught up in uh, uh, the day to day uh, and the hurdles that, that we, we seek to overcome. Um, and we don't allow ourselves to take a step back and appreciate the, the mysteries uh, of the world uh, and, to, and to really try and, and care for them. Um, so I, th I think it's vital for us to, to, to find ways to, to break out of that everyday uh, uh, sort of task-oriented mindset that we, that we slip into and uh, appreciate the, the, the mystery and, and wonder of, of life. And I think that f focusing on mortality, with respect to, to, to your point, focusing on mortality is a, a brilliant way to do that. Uh, if, if we can appreciate the fact that death is our destiny and that death could come at any moment, well, that just uh, uh, spurs us to try and dredge the value out of uh, the moment uh, that we live in. But, you know, ultimately, I think that doing this is nothing more than a matter of recovering something that's very basic and very fundamental 
to our human nature. Um, just to wind things up, I'd, I'd, I'd like to say a few words about this fascinating film I saw a couple of years ago at the film festival, uh, a film called Cave of Forgotten Dreams by the German director Werner Herzog. I don't know if you've seen it, 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 is, it is wonderful. Um, Herzog takes a camera inside uh, the Chauvet Caves in southern France, uh, where there are the oldest known um, cave paintings. Beautiful uh, art uh, on the walls of this ancient, ancient cave. Um, dates back 32,000 years. Um, it's the oldest record of uh, human artistic endeavor. Um, and Herzog makes a really interesting point. Uh, he says all this art was uh, completed by the Cro-Magnon people that we're descended from. Um, the Neanderthal people that we are not descended from lived at the same, in the same period of time, but there is absolutely no record of the Neanderthals creating cave art. Um, and so the uh, conclusion that Herzog draws from this is that Right there at the birth, the evolutionary birth of uh, the human species, we find the artistic impulse, the desire to create meaning and beauty uh, through, through symbols. I like to think about that in a slightly different, more philosophical light. I, try, I like to imagine a, a lonely cave painter sitting there in the dark uh, make, you know, with a torch and a, and a, and a stick, and, and uh, he or she like, makes a mark on the wall and it's just a mark, it's just a scratch, it could be nothing. Um, but at some moment in time, this cave painter looked at that mark and saw potential for something more. They saw a, a potential uh, horn or, or hoof for a set of hunters traveling across the savannah. Um, and in that moment, uh, the human being invested the world with value. You can imagine this, this painter sitting there looking at the mark and one moment they see a mark and the next moment they see something important, something meaningful, something that needs to be completed. Um, I think that in that moment the human being is discovering its capacity to bring meaning and value to the world through, through caring about the world around it. And perhaps also at the same time um, that, uh, that, that, uh, that cave person said, you know, what, what is this meaning? Uh, what is the value of this thing here? Uh, what am I doing sitting here in the dark, you know? What is the meaning of my existence in this cave? Uh, I, I, I like to think that the impulse to value the world and care for the world and the impulse to reflect on and appreciate the world all came together around at the same time. Um, in other words, I do believe that philosophy, the, the philosophical instinct, is something innate uh, to our nature. And we only need to take that philosophical step back and appreciate the beauty, the glory, uh, the richness of life to rekindle that philosophical instinct. It's a worthwhile pursuit. Um, and it's something that we should all try and do as often as we can, I believe.